So, do you need to reload Windows, but you really don't want to reload Windows? Well, Microsoft might have made a solution for you, because in Windows 11, you can reload the operating system without actually reloading the operating system. Stay tuned. All the way back in Windows XP, there was a way of using Windows Setup where you could do a repair install of Windows without affecting your installed programs or data. It would essentially replace the operating system without messing up everything else you have installed on your computer. This was incredibly useful, and I can't even count the amount of times that I used it. Unfortunately, it went away after Windows XP, but it looks like it might kind of be back. That's what we're talking about today. But first, I gotta pay some bills, so check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be, because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop The a valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So unfortunately, the new feature in Windows 11 that lets you do essentially a repair install isn't as good as the Windows XP version of this feature. You see, because the majority of the time that I used this fix in Windows XP systems was when a system just wouldn't boot into Windows. For that, it was extremely effective. Unfortunately, with Windows 11, you have to at least be able to boot into the operating system to use this. What's worse is that you can't use this from safe mode either. Primarily because at the time of filming this, I couldn't get safe mode with networking working. And I'm not sure if that's why it's not working or if it won't work in safe mode at all, but that's one of the reasons why I couldn't get it to work. So if you wanna do a repair install in Windows 11, you're going to have to figure out how to get the system to boot. Luckily, I've got an entire playlist of how to do that. But with the repair install itself, let's jump on the system and I'll show you how it's done. So if we jump down in here, we're gonna go to the start button, we're gonna go into settings, and as you can see on my system right here, I'm running Windows 23H2. And this is the build you're gonna need to use this feature. However, if you have Windows 10, it's not gonna work, but I'll show you another way, so stay tuned. And if you don't have this feature on your Windows 11 build, then the alternative should also work for you. So to do this, you wanna go into system, you wanna scroll down to recovery, and then from recovery, it's right here where it says fix problems using Windows Update. And if you push this button, it says reinstall now. And you just go ahead and hit OK, and it starts the Windows update process. Now, this process is what it's gonna, essentially going to do is it's, it's going to download the latest build of Windows, or at least the build of Windows that you're currently using, and do a repair install on the system. It's going to replace the operating system, similar to the way that Windows XP used to do it. So as you can see, what it's downloading now is the Windows 11 version 23H2 repair version. And this will download that and install it on your system and it shouldn't affect any of the programs that are running on your computer as well as affect any of the data that you have in your computer either. It should essentially give you your system back with a new version of Windows that has everything on it that you used to have. So there's a chance that you're not gonna have this feature on your system. If you're running Windows 11 22H2 or earlier, or if you're running Windows 10, then unfortunately, this feature is not available. However, I'm pretty sure all this feature is doing is an in-place upgrade of your current version of Windows. If that's the case, then you can do an in-place upgrade and get the same results if this feature isn't available in your system. So we'll go ahead and let this one finish right here and then we'll jump back on the computer and I'll show you how to do just a regular in-place upgrade. All right, so here we are back in Windows 11. If we go into settings, go into system and we scroll down to about, as you can see, we're still running 23H2, the exact same build that we were building before, except it's 
kind of new. It's got a new operating system, but it has all the same applications and settings that I had before. However, if you don't have this feature on your system and you want to be able to take advantage of the same thing, I believe all they're using is an in-place upgrade. And to do that, all you have to do is go over to Microsoft's website. I'll leave a link in the description below. But in order to do this, all you got to do is scroll down, go down to right here where it says the you want the ISO for the device that you're using and then go ahead and select download, select Windows 11 and then push the download button. It'll go through and do whatever checks that it needs to do. And at this point, all you got to do is select a language. So I'm going to select English United States, hit confirm, and then it's going to go through and do its thing again. And at this point, you should be able to click the download button right here and it should go through and download the ISO. So I've already downloaded this ISO. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and I'm just going to jump into my downloads directory and we're going to fire it up from right here. And it's going to take a second, but essentially what it's doing is it's going to mount the ISO into the system and then it's going to allow us to do a repair install or do a in-place upgrade. And it might take a second. Okay, and here we go. And we're going to go ahead and hit open. And then from this point, this is essentially mounted as a virtual drive. And from here you can hit setup and it'll go through the regular setup process. And this one is definitely a little bit more difficult than the other one. The other one, you just clicked one button and it was done. Now, I like to uncheck this right here because I don't wanna give Microsoft any more information than they already get. And then hit the next button and it'll go through and it'll check for updates. And then it should restart the setup program. And here we go. And it'll go through this whole thing again. It checks for if your system is compatible with Windows 11. Now, if you're running Windows 11 on an unsupported system, then this might get a little bit more complicated because you might have to do this in the same way that you would if you were upgrading to a different build because you can't use the Windows 11 installer on an unsupported system. But I've got plenty of videos for that too. So I would check them out if you need it. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and hit accept. And it, apparently it has to check for updates again because it not like it checked for updates like three seconds ago. But this time it looks like it's really checking for updates. So it's taking a little bit longer. <laughs> okay, so checking for updates finally finished. That took entirely longer than it should have. I'm not sure why, but normally it goes fairly quickly. So hopefully this next step won't take as long as the last one did. But as you can see, it's definitely easier just using the button inside of settings, inside the recovery in settings to do this same thing than it is doing the in-place upgrade. But as long as you can sit through the menus, I think the end result is about the same. Okay, so right here, essentially what it's going to do is it's going to install Windows 11 Pro and it's going to keep personal files and apps. And as soon as I push the install button, it will do an in-place upgrade for Windows 11. So like I said before, unfortunately doing an in-place upgrade has a lot more buttons to click other than pushing just the one button telling Windows to do it for you. However, I'm pretty sure both methods do exactly the same thing. The new feature in Windows 11 just makes it a little bit more automated. However, the problem still remains that if your system doesn't boot, then neither of these methods are going to help you at all. Unfortunately, it's just not possible to do an in-place upgrade in Windows Recovery. I wish it was because that would be really nice and it would solve a lot of problems. In those cases, you're just going to have to figure out why it won't boot. And there's lots of reasons why a Windows system won't boot. First, you need to make sure that it's not a hardware problem that's stopping you from booting. If that's the case, then you can resolve the hardware problem and Windows is probably just gonna boot fine. The first step that I typically take on a system that isn't booting into Windows that I suspect to be a hardware issue is to run Memtest 86. If you get any errors at all, it's pretty guaranteed that you have a bad stick of RAM. I've never had that program error out and it not be a bad stick of memory. It's a pretty accurate test. If you have multiple sticks of memory in your system, you can always pull one out and then run the test again and see if you continue to get errors. If you do, then switch the sticks and run, to, and run the test again. If you can complete the test without any errors, then the stick that you removed is a bad stick of memory.
just leave it out and try to boot your system into Windows. Unfortunately, you're going to have a lot less memory than you had before. So you might wanna buy another stick of RAM to replace the one that went bad. When it comes to other hardware problems, you just have to use the standard troubleshooting steps to try to figure out what's causing the problem. I did an entire video on that a while back, and I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below if you'd like to check it out. You can start with pulling out everything that's not necessary to boot Windows. This can include using your onboard video and pulling out your GPU. You don't have onboard video, then you might have to swap in a GPU that you know is good. And you can also try reseeding your CPU by just taking it out and putting it back in. While it's out, if it's a PGA socket, look at the pins on the CPU really close and make sure you don't have any bent pins. If you have an LGA socket, then look at the socket really close to make sure that there's no bent pins on the socket. Now, if you have bent pins on a PGA CPU, then you can use a razor blade to try to straighten them out. But in reality, you have to be really careful because if you break one of them, then you're kind of done. And with that said, if you have bent pins on an LGA socket, then just buy a new motherboard. You're never going to straighten those out. But honestly, bent pins are probably not the reason why a running system would stop booting. But with that said, it's very rare to see CPUs go bad in the first place. And bad motherboards typically don't post in the first place. So if your system is posting, then your motherboard and CPU are probably okay. But if you're convinced that it's not a hardware issue that's stopping your system from booting, then there's still a few things that you can do. If you get into recovery, then you can always try running SFC scan now and try to repair the system files in hopes that it will allow your system to boot into Windows. Now, if you can't get into recovery, then you might have a bootloader issue. Luckily, you can use a Windows install USB to rebuild your UEFI boot partition. Unfortunately, you might have a bad hard drive too, and if that's the case, then Unfortunately, you're reloading Windows from scratch. But both of those repairs that I had just mentioned, I have done videos about in the past. If you'd like to see a video about running SFC the right way, then click right here. And if you'd like to see a video on rebuilding the UEFI partition, then click right here. Both of these repairs have saved my butt many times. But as always, you guys have a great day.